Tupile is a, it's a program of government where we encourage public servants to put people first. Uh, there are guiding principles on where we outline what is it that the public servant must do in order to make sure that uh, uh, they put people first. And moving from there, we also have to mobilize the public to come forward and, and to know their rights in terms of uh, Vatopili, that what are they entitled to, what policies of government and what programs of government are out there that they are entitled to. This particular campaign for Batopele, for DPSA, uh, it was a re really simple brief. The client wanted to be present on radio beyond 30 seconds. We all know that whole beyond 30 second idea where you're not using the regular 30 second advert. So uh, what was developed in this regard were three to five minutes radio dramas. And, and some of them were radio shows within a radio station. Uh, we created a character called DJ BP. DJ BP is DJ Batopele. And uh, this guy would be talking to different notes. It was pre-recorded. So this guy would be talking to uh, created characters within the, the, the whole drama itself. And uh, people calling in and all of that. It was created such that it had all the radio stings. It had uh, all the, the jingles around it as well. So it, when you listen to it, it almost created a radio show within a radio station. At the, at the time when we were running the campaign, that was the only campaign we were running for Batopele and Know Your Service Rights. And then there's the one campaign where we are mobilizing. Uh, the campaign is tailor-made for mobilizing the public to come forward to access government services. So uh, we can say that at the... Uh, at that time, the number of people that came forward to want to access government, they were mobilized by the campaign. And if you look at uh, how you use radio, uh, recently we had to choose uh, between using uh, print, community print, regional print, uh, compared to radio. And then this is on the another campaign of uh, mobilizing people who were formerly discriminated for pension funds. They were contributing to pension funds, but in terms of uh, uh, benefiting, they were not benefiting the same with other people. So in order to mobilize those people to come forward and claim their pensions, we had to really look at where do we uh, reach these people and then how are we going to reach them. Most, uh, some of them might be your elderly, and then uh, how do you talk to those people? So we, we, we had to do our, our, our research and then uh, really target our audience and then radio again came up as the only medium that we can use. So yes, uh, uh, we can say that we find radio more and more being the uh, most effective instrument to reach our people wherever they are. Frequency cost per thousand, people listen to it all the time, people listen to it in their cars. But all of that is too obvious. There's one important factor that you need to acknowledge. Radio is a friend. And listeners listen to it, it becomes a part of their lives. And as a result, when a friend tells you of special, that you can get something somewhere, you generally pay more attention. When a friend tells you, I've just heard of this new mayonnaise, for some reason, you want to listen more because it's a friend telling you about it. So it's all of that stuff and a little more. You have to always acknowledge that people treat radio as a personal medium. It's a part of their lives. And as a result, you're able to place your brand on radio and you get the results that you want. Uh, among the many, many mediums that are available, uh, from print, TV, we chose radio because we felt uh, it's easy access. Uh, we can reach people in uh, all the 11 languages, official 11 languages. and. Also because we thought we, we could reach our target audience at the best time uh, where they are just relaxed and uh, we didn't have to take an effort to make them uh, receive the message because while they are uh, going about their daily routines, they can listen to radio in the background. While they are traveling home in their means of transport they can be uh, listening to radio you know because radio is an interesting medium in this regard people always listen to it while they're doing other things 
the last thing you want is to tell them 10 left, 10 right, 10 left, 10 right, 10 right again. Don't give them too many details. Give what's important to you. Direct them where they should go to get more information. Radio helps with that. And radio with mnemonics and jingles, it helps to keep the message in the background of their minds. Every time they hear that melody, they know, oh, it's that campaign. That's why with Batupele campaign, we had uh, a little intros and jingles and station IDs. When people hear it, they knew exactly what they were listening to. Radio works like that. Don't bombard people with too much information. Don't write too many num Don't have too many numbers in the ad. Nobody will remember them. There's a lot of resources you can use to get information about your consumers. Because any marketer knows that before you embark on a big marketing campaign, you need to know who you're talking to. You need to know how to talk to them. But why is it that very often we get that tiny detail wrong? We miss the mark. And radio is a very cruel medium in that regard. If your message is incorrect, is placed at the wrong time to the wrong audience. Radio exposes you very quickly. And you always say, it didn't work for me. Radio doesn't work for me. Let me tell you. Always look at your message. Was your message right for the audience you were talking to? Simple, it's a very dumb example. If you're going to Dev and you've been given directions and you get the directions wrong, do you blame the car or the driver? I would blame the driver, not the car. Radio gives you the audience. What you do with them is entirely up to you. And if you're going to tell them the wrong information about your product, don't blame the radio station. Blame your information. I see, I would encourage uh, advertising agencies and creatives and also clients, especially marketers and communicators, to start engaging the process of producing radio content in a, with a lot more detail, a lot more attention. Uh, because I said it, we get it wrong when we assume we know what we don't know. And, and, and it's in the, those moments, those tiny moments where we need to pay attention to the tiny details that pertain to our audience. And when I say our audience, I'm talking about radio stations and the people that you as a market and a communicator tries to talk to. They're your audience. The minute you buy the advertising space on a specific station, they become your audience. You're hoping they react to your message. You're hoping they, they hear what you say and they actually buy the product you're trying to sell. So if they're not going to, you're not going to pay attention to the type of people they are, what they do, where they do what they do. I know you may think it's a lot of work, but trust me, it's important because you're going to spend a lot of money on the advertising space. And if it doesn't work, it's a waste of money for you.